Now, for anyone trying to get into sports car racing, it can be pretty intimidating. I mean, if you look at the GT classes, you have the terms GTLM, GTE, GT3, GTD being thrown around, which can be confusing to new fans. Same thing with the concept of driver ratings, Pro, Am, Silver, Gold, Platinum. And that's where I come in. My goal is to explain and simplify North American endurance racing in IMSA, Grand Am, the history, and all that. Today I'll be taking a look at the North American Endurance Cup, formerly known as the North American Endurance Championship, which plays a role in four of the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship events. Now the North American Endurance Cup has only existed since 2012, but it was first heard about in mid-2011 and later confirmed in November of that year. The 2012 North American Endurance Cup would contain three events. The Rolex 24 at Daytona, the longest endurance race in Grand Am, the Salem 6 Hours at the Glen, the second endurance race in Grand Am, and the last event would be a new one, the Brickyard Grand Prix, a three-hour race on the Indianapolis Motor Speedway road course. Now, in January of 2012, before season started, they announced how the points would work. Each of the three endurance races could net a team a maximum of 20 championship points towards the Endurance Cup, but the points distribution was different for each event. Now, at each segment of the race, per se, teams would be awarded points as such. First place would get five points, Second place would get four points. Third place would get three points. And fourth on back would receive two points apiece. Now at Daytona, you'd get the points at the 6, 12, 18, and 24 hour marks, or each quarter of the event. At Watkins Glen, points would be paid out twice, at the halfway point and at the end of the race, with teams receiving double points. Now with Indianapolis being the shortest event at three hours, you would just receive quadruple points. Mark Raffoff was quoted as saying, We wanted to come up with a point system that was different from the regular Rolex series. We feel that the new system will be fun for both fans and participants, while at the same time promoting close competition. Now, in order to score points at any of these events, you must have had a minimum drive time of 30 minutes per car. And if there were any ties for the championship, it would go to wins, then second places, third, fourth, so on. For 2012 and 2013, the first two years, it was the Grand Am North American Endurance Cup presented by VisitFlorida.com for sponsorship reasons. Now, 2014 would see a few changes to the Endurance Cup. First, new sponsorship as Tequila Patron would become the new sponsor of the IMSA Tequila Patron Endurance Cup. The schedule would also change, going from three events to four, but dropping one and adding two new ones. Gone was Indianapolis, but added was Sebring and Petit Le Mans. Double points, trip points, that's all gone too. So the points distribution is the same as before. Winner gets five, second gets four, third gets three, fourth onwards get two apiece. At Daytona, points distribution, exactly as it was before. Six, 12, 18, 24. Sebring would receive points at four, eight, and 12 hours, each third of the race netting you five points for leading. Watkins Glen would give out points at halfway and at full distance, being three and six hours apiece. And the season-ending Petit Le Mans would be a little different. You'd receive points at the 4, 8, and 10-hour marks for Petit Le Mans. You still can net a maximum of 60 points throughout the four-race season. Now, the format hasn't changed to today, the only difference being that Michelin has taken over as the title sponsor of the Michelin Endurance Cup a few years back. Now, I hope this video did clear up any questions you might have had about the subject. Thank you for watching this episode of IMSA Explain. I hope you enjoyed. This has been AZ Sports Car 80, hoping you guys take care, drive safe, and stay cool this summer.